Sam, what do you say about it? No, Ruth, just forget it. There's just no way. But you said yourself Ben's a good cook. Yeah, but I need him here. I can't be sending him out to your place three times a day. You need a cook, I need a clerk. My men are going to quit if I don't get a good cook. Oh, have another drink, will you, Ruth? Harv Haynes cooked supper last night. You know, the men used to throw the leftovers to the dog last night. They were trading with him. It's bad, Sam, it's bad. Of course, there's one person I bet you haven't asked. Best cook in the whole valley, too. Who's that? Marion Starrett. <laughs> oh, good morning, Miss Starrett. Shane. Hello, Hi, Sam. Sam. Well, what'll it be today? I'd like some flour, some sugar, and some vanilla extract. Mm hmm, that sounds like pie baking time to me. You know, I can tell more about people and what they're up to by their grocery list than you'd think. Like, I bet you Fred Hoffman's having trouble with his store teeth and buying cloves all week. Miss Starrett, what kind of pie are you making? Pumpkin pie, Mr. Riker. Why? No reason. Forget it. I need some peppers, too. Shame. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Riker. You're looking sort of peaked. You're losing weight? <laughs> you all finished? Yes. Well, that'll be four bits. Mm. Here you go. <laughs> you got a big mouth, Sam. Oh, come on, Ruth. You gotta admit it's kind of funny. What is? You. You know, for a minute there, I really thought you were gonna ask Miss Dow to come and cook for you. You think that's funny? <laughs> sure, Ruth. I'll tell you, Sam. There are times when I want something, I usually get it. But when I need something, I always get it. And I need a cook. Got another one of our men, Shane. Yeah, it's a shame. There's one good thing, though. At least there'll be one less person eating that pumpkin pie tonight. Yeah, and that poor devil sure did love his pumpkin pie. Well, I guess we better bury him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were dead, Drooper. <laughs> Joey, come and get your tonic. Ah, oh, Ma. It's good for you. Come on, come and get it over with.
Riker, why don't you tie your horse to the corral and make yourself at home? I just came to talk to Miss Starrett. What about? It's between her and me. In a pig's eye, it is. You can just as well talk to us. No, I can't. The place belongs to her, and I got to talk with her. Her and me's got to negotiate. Like I said, what about? Afternoon, Miss Starrett. Good afternoon, Mr. Riker. Miss Starrett, I want to talk to you about that new fence you just put up. It's uh, causing me a peck of trouble. Well, Shane and Tom know more Ms. about Starrett, that than I. You own this place. If there's a problem between us, it's up to you to settle it. Of course, if you want to talk it over with your father-in-law, your hired hand, that's fine. But you and me ought to talk about it first. Riker, what are you trying to do? I'm trying to be a reasonable man. Well, well, I guess it is my place. Mom! Well, Joey, when people have a difference of opinion, it sometimes does help if they can sit down and talk it over. Reasonably. That's right. Riker, I don't like you much at any time. But I like you better when you don't try to grease us into something. Miss Derrick, can I come in and talk? What do you know about that? Everything's going to be all right, isn't it, Shane? Sure. Sort of hot. Of course. It's good, good though. Thank you. Uh, shouldn't we be talking about the fence? <clears throat> fence? The one that we put up. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Starrett, that, uh, that fence. Uh, well, uh, now, the reason that that fence is going to give us a problem is that... Uh, the reason that fence is a problem is that there's no way for my cattle to get the... Soup? Yes. <clears throat> Smells good. Thank you. Mm. That's vegetable, ain't it? About the fence. Hmm? Oh, yeah, the fence. Well, uh, Miss Starrett, now let's face it. There are a lot of things that you and I are never going to agree about, but... Shane? That hurt. <laughs> sure does. Oh, come on now, don't trouble yourself, none. <laughs> we have to settle up about that fence. Yes, the fence. Why don't you come over to my house for dinner tonight? We can talk. Excuse me. Cut myself. Won't be but a minute. Well, what do you say about tonight, Miss Starrett? Oh, well, I don't know. I, I've already started supper here. Um, couldn't it wait till tomorrow? Well, I got 20 men on wages waiting for a decision. It's mighty costly. Well, would you like to join us? I'd be honored. Excuse me. Thank you very much. She's invited him to dinner. No. I'll just go back to my place and clean up. Be back before you know it. This evening. I have to uh, set another place for supper, Tom. Yeah, I heard it. How's your finger? It's all right, thanks. I know it's hard to understand, but, well, he was trying to be so reasonable, and so was I, and. Well, when he invited me over to his place for supper and I couldn't go, it only seemed right that I should invite him here. I don't know how it happened. Shane, you will be in for supper, won't you? You can bet on it. Are you going to stay outside and play for a while, Joey? I guess so. Well, don't wander off now. I won't.
You just don't know, Mr. Riker. Three of the men quit. They just up and left. I told you, Harv. I'm working on and it. And another thing, Mr. Here, Riker. how does this look? Fine, fine, That's good. Fine. I gotta go now. And there's something else we gotta get settled, Mr. Riker. What? I'm through doing the cooking around here. Harv, there are a lot of problems in running a ranch like this. There's the homesteaders, and there's the weather. There's the ornery nature of steers. And I can handle all of them, all of them. But what you just said, that stumps me, I admit it. Why can't you cook no more? Because that stuff would choke a pig, Mr. Riker. You're cooking and it! And it stinks! Here, take the men down to Grafton's and buy them some dinner. Yes, sir, Mr. Riker, you bet I will. A heart! Yes, sir. That's for food. They pay for their own guzzling. You got it. Oh, and Mr. Riker, good luck. Thanks. I may need it. You sure look good. What a stare ought to say yes before you get in the front door. <laughs> Good dishes? Of course, we've got company. Company? Riker ought to have something bigger, like a trough. That's uncalled for. So is inviting him here tonight. Tom, if you don't want to stay for dinner, you don't have to. I didn't say that. I've heard you down in Grafton's a hundred times telling the other homesteaders to be reasonable. Well, now we've got Well, that's different. How? Well, because, doggone it, this is our home. He's been trying every way he can to get us out of it. Doesn't that mean anything to you? It means everything to me. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Just, it's just so darn full of goodness that you don't realize sometimes when they're trying to take advantage of you. Is that what you think's happening now? Yes, I do. Of course, there's another possibility. What's that? Well, it could be that I'm such an old grump that I think every butterfly is a bumblebee in disguise. <laughs> All right, honey. We'll see how it works out. Shane, what's the devil incarnate mean? Where would you hear that? Billy Klinkenek says that his father says that Ruth Riker is the devil incarnate. Well, that's a little strong. We've got our troubles with Ruth Riker, but he's just a man. Betty Jo Rodgers says that Ruth Riker steals babies and eats them. I know. Betty Jo Rodgers stupid. All I want you to do is be polite to him when he gets here. The Ruth Riker? Well, your mother invited him to dinner. So for tonight, he's our guest. I want you to treat him like one. Look, here he comes. He's all dressed up. He looks like he's going courting. Uh, cut myself. Again? Yeah. Come on. Let's go meet our guest. And remember, you be polite to him. I will. Come on, let's go. Well, good evening, little man. Good evening, Mr. Riker. I'm glad you could make it. Evening, Shane. Nice to be here. You uh, got a cut on your chin. Yeah, I know. Let's go inside. Oh, yes, I'm hungry enough to eat it. Let's go. People starving in the world, it'd be a shame to leave any of it. That's what my mom always says. Could I trouble you for some more coffee, please? Riker, you came to talk to us about the fence. Yeah, that's right. I've been thinking about it. 
I've changed my mind. I've decided I was wrong. You're admitting you're wrong? That's right. You mean you're not going to ask us to take down the fence? No, I'm not, Miss Starrett. No, no, I've been thinking about you people. About the way you're scratching to make out here and barely making it from month to month. Not living in a proper home. This home is proper enough for us. I don't mean it that way, Starrett. It's just that if we could all learn to do more cooperating, it would be better. We don't want to cooperate with you, Riker. Tom. Well, honey, can't you see it's a trick? All I can see is Mr. Riker's trying to help matters. And you're trying to keep them in the sorry state they're already in. Thank you, Miss Starrett. I appreciate your feelings. I'm glad that there's somebody here who agrees with me, understands what I'm trying to do. Well, I guess I better be going. I'll get your horse. It's a wonderful meal. Thank you, Mr. Riker. We ought to do this more often. Good night, little lad. Good night. Good night, Starrett. <clears throat> Dad, I, I do appreciate it, that meal. I, I don't mean just the cooking. I, well, when you eat dinner in a bunkhouse with a lot of men, it ain't the same as home cooking with a woman tending. Well, maybe we did achieve something tonight, Mr. Riker. I found out that you're not an ogre, but a man who can be pleasant and charming. And I'll try to remember that in the future. Kind words, Miss Starrett. They're true words, Mr. Riker. Ruth. Good night. Good night, Shane. Not just yet. It's been a very peaceful evening. Don't, don't spoil it. Riker, I know what you want. I'm not going to let you get away with it. I'm glad you do, Shane. Because I don't. That's gospel. Joey, do your homework. Oh, Mom, couldn't I do it in the morning? Hi, Grandpa. Sorry to have another cup of coffee before I go to bed. You're going to bed already? It's only 7.30. Well, it's easy to pout when you're alone in your room, Joey. Nobody's pouting around here. Then what are you doing? I'm doing my best to stay away from you so I won't be tempted to tell you what I really think of what happened here tonight. Tell me. I'd like to know. Yeah, so would I. Aren't you going to tell me, Mom? Nope. But why aren't you? Because I forgot what I was going to say. I'm going to bed. You want a good night hug? Yeah. Good night. You're the one that's going to bed, Grandpa. Not me. <laughs> Quiet tonight, Ruth. I 
thinking. What about? Thinking how nice it'd be to have someone to talk to. I'm a pretty good listener, Ruth. I'm oh, thinking about a woman. Yeah, ain't easy being a bachelor. That's right. You know, Sam, man just naturally prunes up unless there's a woman around. Uh, well, you get used to it. You miss your wife sometimes? <laughs> Every day since she died. You know, there's a part of my back I just can't reach when I'm scratching. Emma knew just where that was. <laughs> and take yourself a glass. Well, thank you, Ruth. There's parts of a man's spirit need a woman. Emma knew that, too. You know, I ain't never been married. But sometimes I wish there was something warmer in my life than my old hound dog laying across my feet. You know, they say there are plenty of girls back east. Mm -hmm. I don't want to buy it, Sam. You told me when you need something, you always get it. That's still the truth, Sam. Yeah, that's so. When I need it, I go out and I get it. Sure, sure. I go out and I work for it. And when I work for it, I get it. And when I get it, I deserve it. Right, Ruth. Have another drink. Yeah, no. No, thanks, Sam. I, uh, I've been drinking too much lately and putting on a little weight doesn't look too good. Just go home and get myself a good night's rest. You do the same. I am home, Ruth. Oh, do your world of good. Ruth. You know, you're talking like a man in love. Nah. No, I'm in need. Maybe it's the same thing. I still think that beard ought to go. Over my dead body. Would you please hold still, Mr. Riker? I almost cut your ear off that time. Why don't you watch how you handle those things? I tell you, Sam. Beard stays. That's final. Suit yourself. But if I was the widow Starrett... You ain't the widow Starrett. Ouch! I'm sorry, Mr. Riker, but I told you to stop jumping around. Morning, Shane. Morning, Sam. Hi, Shane. I didn't hear you come in. Well, that makes it equal, Riker. You didn't hear me, but I couldn't help smelling you. What's going on? Getting a haircut. What's the occasion? There's no occasion. All right, keep working, but just be careful, huh? Yes, sir. Say, Shane, you and I got a lot in common. You ever think of that? No, I haven't. Well, it's true, you know. Of course, I got a few years on you, but... I'm strong as a hickory bull, and I'm twice as smart. Comes with the years. Sam, we came in to buy some shotgun shells. Sure thing. You gonna do some bird shooting? No, we've been having some varmint trouble lately. Just me. I'm sorry. I'm so silly, but you startled me. I didn't expect you back from town so soon. I saw Ruth Riker in town. Oh, did you? He was getting a haircut. Well, what's so surprising about that? I imagine even Mr. Riker has to get a haircut sometime. In fact, yours needs some trimming now you mention it. Come on into the house and I'll get the clippers out. Never mind. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Come on. Marion, I want to talk to you. Well, come on into the house. We can talk while I cut your hair. Marion, you want to hear something funny? Well, I was down in Grafton. So... Uh, sit down. Hold still. I'm going to get a pin. You can keep talking. I can hear you. It's about Riker.
you hear what I said? Yes, I heard you. What about Mr. Riker? What would you say if I told you <laughs> that Riker is courting you? I wonder where I put that pin. Ah, here it is. I've got to get this house organized. It's odd how every so often things just seem to get out of hand. What with the washing and the ironing and the canning. Sometimes I just seem to let things go. Did, did you hear what I said? <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, you haven't seen the way you look in that thing. Ryan, I'm being serious. Riker is trying to court you. He wants to marry you. Well, what's so funny about that? That's not funny, but it's odd. Odd? Well, come to think of it, Riker wouldn't be a bad catch for some woman. After all, he's, uh, he's not altogether bad-looking, and he's certainly got wealth and security. Shane, he's an old man. Not old. Mature would be a better word, don't you think? Well, since you mention it, yes, I think you do have a point. Marianne, are you serious? Is Mr. Riker serious? Well, he... Well, maybe he is. But you... Sit still. What are you doing? Nothing. I'm not doing anything. What? All right, you gonna let me cut your hair? No. Hi, Shane. Hello, Joey. Shane. What? You get those shotgun shells? Yeah, I got them. Grandpa, are you mad about something? Mad? Why should I be mad? I don't know. Why don't you tell us? Oh, it just doesn't make any sense. What doesn't make sense? Nothing. Everything. Women. Oh. Why did you say oh, Grandpa? Well, I'll tell you, Joey. Let you and me go fishing and see if we can figure it out, huh? Derek, I uh, hope you don't mind my stopping in without notice. That's all right. I'd like to have a word with you. If... Go ahead. Well, if you don't mind, it's uh, sort of private. Oh. Well, come on inside, Mr. Riker. <laughs> Won't you sit down, Mr. Riker? Well, thank you. Thank you. I... Don't mind if I do. Oh, please. No, after you. Oh. Well, we certainly have been seeing a lot of you recently, Mr. Riker. Yeah, I guess so. I, uh... Would you like some coffee? No, no. Thanks. Uh, well, Mister... I suppose... <laughs> Miss, Miss, Miss Darrett, I, uh, I brought something for you. For me? Yes, it's uh, uh, peanut brittle. Oh. You like peanut brittle, Miss Darrett? Oh, I love peanut brittle, Mr. Wright. <laughs> Go on, uh, open it up. Would you like a piece? Oh, I don't mind if I do, thank you. <laughs> Couldn't try one. Come all the way from St. Louis. It's 
It's very good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Want to have another piece? Oh, no, no, thank you. Mr. Hart, I guess you, you're wondering what I come here for today. Well, as a matter of truth, Mr. Riker, yes, it had crossed my mind. Hey, you better clean those fish before you show them to your mother. I've been thinking about it ever since uh, that supper. I mean, the one that you cooked. Yes. Well, I, I've been thinking about you people and, and this here place. And uh, I've been thinking about me and how I've been bucking you and how it's wrong. And I was thinking that it'd be better if, if we were friends. I see. And then I was thinking that maybe even more than my friends. Grandpa! Now, hush, hush, hush. Really, Mr. Riker. What's going on? I'm trying to hear something. I just don't know what... Who's in there? Riker. Again? Yes. yes, and I'm trying to hear what he's saying to your mom. Yeah, now, you just be quiet a minute. Me my feet. But you said it's not I'm nice to listen into other to people's down. conversations. Well, it's different this time. It's now, you just be quiet. Beautiful. I wonder what Tom and Joey will say. And Shane? Yes. But then he is only the hired hand, isn't he? <sighs> hmm. What's the matter, Grandpa? I don't know, Joey. I just heard something that I can hardly believe. Been here the last couple of hours. Shane? Hello, Tom. You gotta come back out to play. Something's happened. Riker's been there. How do you know? Sam, give me another bottle. Shane! This is serious. She said yes? I don't know what she said. I don't even know what the question was. Yeah, but we both got a pretty good idea, don't we? Darn good idea. That's why you gotta get out there and do something about it. What would you suggest? Ask her yourself. It's a good idea. No. What do you mean, no? Our whole way of life is a stake. Can't you see that? I can see that. I can see a lot more, too. A gunfighter with no past and not much of a future trying to compete with somebody like Riker. Owns half his valley. He's got a good herd, a house, a barn, a solid bank account. All I own is a gun, a saddle, and a pretty good horse. And a first-rate chance that some yahoo's gonna come blowing into town tomorrow and put me in a pine box. That's not much to offer Joey and Marion, is it? Come off it, Shane. You've got more to offer than that. No, I haven't. I'm facing that. I always have. What about Riker? Well, Riker isn't so bad. At least he's a man. He's got something there, Tom. Whatever you say against Riker, he's a man, sure enough. He's honest, hard-working. You don't have to tell me about Riker. I know what he is. I've seen Riker ever since I came into this valley. I never thought I'd ever see the day that you'd just stand there and let something like this happen. There's nothing I can do. What do you mean? Go out there and talk to her, can't you? It's her decision, not mine. Of course it is. There's nothing wrong in you helping her make up her mind, is there? Look, why don't you go out there and talk to her? Yeah, that's a good idea, Tom. Stay out of this, Sam. All right. That's the way you want it, Tom. Oh, stop acting like somebody just stole your marbles. This is serious. Well, I didn't say it wasn't. Then you never did ask me for my advice, did you? No, I didn't. No. Come to think of it, and how you mention it, what is your advice? I think it's up to Shane there. After all, it's his life. But it seems to me that Ruth Reich has tried every way he can to get you out of this valley. Every way but one. You're right. That's it, another trick. Sure is a possibility when you think on it, huh? <laughs> that was a stroke of genius. I thought so myself. Give me a soda pop, Sam. You really think that's what Riker's up to? Nope, I don't. 
I think he's sincere. You know, when Ruth Riker sets out to do something, he usually gets it done. The only other man I can think of like that in this whole valley is Shane. You know, it's going to be really interesting to see how this comes out. Really interesting. Here's your pop, Tom. But how come we have to get all dressed up and take a bath? It's not even Saturday yet. Because I may decide we have somewhere to go tonight. But where? I haven't decided yet. Does it have something to do with Mr. Riker? Why do you ask that, Joey? Because he's been over a lot lately. Joey, what do you think of Mr. Riker? Billy Klinkenek says that Mr. Riker chains little boys to fence posts and brands them, just like calves. Joey, that's silly. Billy Klinkenek says that... I don't care what Billy Klinkenek says. I want to know what you think. Really. He's not as nice as Shane. And he's a lot older. Marion! Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought... Hi, Shane! What's the matter, Shane? You sound upset. Marion, I've... I've got to talk to you. We're going over to Ruth Riker's house for supper. Oh? Uh-huh. Joey, go and get dressed. Oh, Mom. I still like you better than Riker, Shane. Shane, will you keep your back turned? What did you want to talk to me about, Shane? Marion, why are you going over to Riker's tonight? I didn't say I was going over to Mr. Riker's. But Joy... Jumped to a conclusion. I merely said that I hadn't made up my mind yet. You know what he wants, don't you? I think I do, yes. He wants to be our friend. Mine and Joey's, that is. You and Tom haven't given him much of a chance. You don't give a rattlesnake a chance. Riker is... He's what? Dangerous. Not anymore, he isn't. He's trying to be a decent human being and put an end to a bad situation. Riker will go to any lengths to get your land. Any lengths. What do you mean, any lengths? Lengths. Like... Like asking you to marry him. And what if he does? What does it mean to you? Nothing. Can I assume, Mr. Shane, that you have quit? No, I have not quit. Not yet. Then if it wouldn't be too much trouble, would you please hitch the team to the wagon? Joey and I are going out for supper. Shane? What, Joey? How come you're mad at Mom all the time? Well, it's a little hard to explain. Mom? Are you ready to go, Joey? Yes, ma'am. Don't cry, Mom. Please don't cry. Joey. Shane, where are Marion and Joey? I went to Rikers. You just let them go? I couldn't stop her. She's a grown woman, Tom. All the stupid, idiotic things I ever heard of. What kind of a man are you, Shane? Leave it alone, Tom. Leave it alone. If I was 10 years younger, I'd teach you a lesson you'd never forget. Well, you would. You blame right I would. You haven't got the guts of a heifer. Mary and Joey are the only things I got left in this world. You let them go wandering off at night to visit a man like Riker. They'd have got out of this house over my dead body, and I mean only over my dead body. So why weren't you here? Because I thought you were man enough to handle a job, but I can see I was 100% dead wrong. The only thing you could handle is that gun. Look, ease off. I'm fed up, so ease off. You're fed up? I'd like to show you how fed up I am. Try it, and I'll wipe the floor with you. I don't much care at this point. Well, neither do I. If you'd cared at all in the beginning, she'd never have even considered what's happening tonight. Well, what happened, happened. And that's the way it is. I guess that shows us where we stand. Now, I'm gonna go get her. I'm gonna come back and pack my gear and clear out. 
You see if you can keep her here. Boys. Miss Sturida, I can't tell you how much me and the boys enjoyed the meal. Well, thank you. And I hope everything works out so as you can be here. I mean, uh, well, I mean, you, we think you're a good cook. Oh, nice, 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 nice dinner. Nice. All right, boys. Very nice. Harv, why don't you show Joey around the ranch? Show him the new colts down in the stable. You'd like to see some colts, wouldn't you, boy? Real colts? That's right, they were foaled last week, some of the finest horses you'll ever see. Can I go, Mom? Well, all right. But don't keep him away too long, please. I won't, ma'am. Come along, son. It's a mighty fine son you have. Any man would be proud to raise a boy like that. You're a fine woman, Miss Starrett. Well, thank you, Mr. Riker. Would you like to sit down? I thought that uh, we'd agreed it was going to be Ruth. Well, it does take a little getting used to. Maybe you could get used to it. Miss Darrett, I've got a good place here. And it's all mine, free and clear. You can go to any bank in Cheyenne, they're gonna tell you that my credit's the best. Oh, the men are a little rough, but they'll do anything I tell them. Well, that's very nice, but... Now, what I'm trying to say, this ranch is gonna be here a long time. Secure. You understanding my meaning? I think I do, Mr. Riker. Ruth. No. It is, it is Mr. Riker. Yep. An old grizzly bear like me isn't much of a prize in a contest, is he? Oh, no, you're a you fine know, man. I was so full of juice when I moved into this valley. I could turn over the world with these two hands. <laughs> yes, that was a time. But there was no time for courting, just for building. But it was a time, Miss Dart. That was a time. Now, all I've got is what I built. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Having you here tonight, seeing you serve my men, move around my house, working on the kitchen that was never warmed by a woman before. It all worthwhile, believe me. Come on, Marion, you're going home. Just a minute, Shane. Maybe Miss Starrett isn't ready to go. You stay out of this. Stay out of it? You come busting into my house, why ought I have you strung to my gate post? Where's your gun? Shane! Where's your gun, Riker? We might as well have it out right now. I'll buy that. Stop it! Stop it, both of you. I'm full of pity for you both. You're both so full of pride you can see no further than those guns. Why don't you face the truth? Your time, the time for guns, is over. It's dead. And so are you. I didn't mean no harm, Shane. Am I supposed to believe that? Yeah. Because she's right. 
We're both dead. Gunfighter and an open range cattleman. She'd be a fool to take either one of us. You know that's the truth. Yeah. Yeah. See you, Ruth. So long, Shane. Yes, I am. Why, Shane? Because a man can't change his mold. He's got to be what he is. That's not true, Shane. A man can change if he wants to. If he's got a reason. And if he hasn't got a reason? Then he should try to find one. Things that don't change and grow in life, they wither and die. A man should know that, shouldn't he? I don't know. Maybe with time, you could learn. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Will you try? All right. If that's what you want. It is. What is it, Joey? You know what? No, hi. What? Honest, Grandpa. Honest. Well, now, what do you think of that, boy? <laughs> what do you think of that, huh? <laughs>